Now, an exponential function is a function whose equation can be written in the form y is equal to a times b to the power of x. And there's a few restrictions on these variables. a can't equal 0, b has to be greater than 0, and b also cannot equal 1. And our exponent x has to be an element of real numbers. So now let's compare the graphs of y is equal to 2x and uh, y is equal to 1 half to the power of x. So first of all, I'm going to say the values for a and b for both of these equations. So it's not b to the power of x. Now in both these cases, a is equal to 1. However, in this first function, or actually equation, b is equal to 2. And in this, this one here, b is equal to uh, 0 0.5 or 1 half. Now what we want to do is sketch the graph of the exponential function with the equation y is equal to the power of x. And uh, x, remember, has to be an element of real numbers, so we, we want to use the table of values and the grid. So if I were to plug negative 3 into this equation, 2 to the negative 3, we would, we would end up switching that into a, uh, a positive exponent, which would be 1 over 2 cubed, which would be 1 over 8. And we would do that for all these. So uh, 2 to the power of negative 2 would be 1 over 4. Um, so we're going to use these table of values, and I'm going to plug it into my graph here. At negative 3, I'm at 1 eighth. Negative 2, I'm at a quarter. Negative 1, I'm at a half. 0, I'm at 1 and so on and so forth. And here, here my graph is moving upwards. So y is equal to 2 to the power of x. That was our first graph. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to repeat these steps with my other graph. So 1 half to the power of x. And um, I'm, going to, I'm going to take the same approach. And so if I have a negative 3 here as the exponent, then remember, in order to make this negative 3 a positive 3, all i got to do is, is flip this. And so when I'm at negative 3, this is going to be at positive 8. And we're actually going to be working our way uh, almost in reverse. And so at negative 2, this is going to be 4. And so all I'm doing is I'm taking this value of x, plugging it in for my exponents and simplifying. Negative 1, I'm going to be at 2. At 0, I'll be at 1. Uh, to the power of 1, I'll be at 1 half. And then I increase 1 fourth. 1 8th and 1 16th. Now I'm going to take these values and I'm going to put them into my graph. Here's my second graph and as you can see it's actually a reflection of my first graph. My first graph. Now one thing that we need to notice is that this line here is not actually so my, my line that's approaching my x-axis either of these lines are actually going to cross the x-axis. So these are what is known as an asymptote. And what an asymptote is, is a line whose distance from a given curve, and so this curve here, gets closer and closer to zero. So it, it's always approaching zero. And in the above graph, uh, the x-axis is where I have a horizontal asymptote. So it's like this invisible line that approaches um, my, my x-axis. And so we're going to complete the following chart here. So first of all, uh, for y is equal to 2 to the power of x, we want to state the domain of our function. So the domain of our function is x is an element of real numbers. So our values of x of x for um, my first graph, which was y is equal to the power of x, they're always there's always increasing and decreasing towards any value of x. Now the range of our function um, y has to be greater than zero. As I mentioned earlier, this line is never going to cross um, my, my x-axis. And so because of that, y has to be greater than 0, but it can't equal 0. And y is still also an element of real numbers. So there's no x-intercept of our graph, and our y-intercept of our graph happens at 1. And if I were to state the equation of our asymptote, our equation of our asymptote, we could say y is equal to 0, even though it has to be greater than 0. And 
for our, uh, our, our reflected function, 1 half to the power of x, we're going to have the same information. x is an element of real numbers. Um, y has to be greater than 0. However, y is an element of real numbers. Again, this line does not cross the x-axis and has a y-intercept of 1 and an asymptote equation at y is equal to 0. Now, if we were to complete these using the words growth or decay, my first graph, or my first function here, f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x, this is an example of a growth function. And so if we look at my values, my values are increasing into the positive quadrants. Right? So if I start at my y-intercept, my value increases in x and y values as I, as I move up. Uh, however, my second function, this is an example of what is known as a decay function. And so these values get closer and closer to zero, whereas my, our growth values get further and further away from zero in the positive direction. Now for this next investigation, we're going to use the graphing calculator, and then we're going to input these these equations and then place them on our line here. So I have the first one ready to go. I have uh, y, is, uh, y is equal to 3 to the power of x and I use these pretty small window settings. And so if I draw this first graph in, it looks something like, like this. And so this was y is equal to 3 to the power of x. Now let's see this next graph. Um, where I have 10 to the power of x. And so as I change that b value, I'm keeping a1, but I, I change the, uh, the b value, my y-intercept stays the same. However, my, my line gets a lot steeper, so it increases a lot, a lot faster. So this is y is equal to 10 to the power of x. Now, let's see what happens when we have y is equal to one-third the power of x. So one-third the power of x is going to open the opposite direction. It's a reflection of our first graph, and so it looks something like this. This is a y is equal to one-third the power of x. Now, our next graph is going to actually look something like this. It's going to be a reflection of our second graph. And so this is y is equal to 1 over 10 to the power of x. So if we pl plug that one in, it's going to be opening here. Now, Let's take a look at the, uh, this information. The value of b affects the steepness of the graph as x increases. So we want to complete the following. When b is, gr is greater than 1, the curve, we could say, rises more sharply as b increases. And so uh, as our value of b, so 10, for example, increased a lot sharper or a lot more rapidly than um, when, when b was equal to 3. Now, when b is less than 1 but greater than zero, than 0, then the curve falls more sharply. And so, again, that was evidenced by um, y is equal to 1 tenth to the power of x. So now, without using a graphing calculator, we want to make a sketch of the graphs of y is equal to 5 to the power of x. So if this is 3 to the power of x and this is 10 to the power of x, then y is 5 to the power of x should be somewhere in between here. And then the other one should be somewhere like that. Oh, and you can't even see what I wrote, but here it is. Um, this is y is equal to 5 to the power of x. And then this was my other one, 1 fifth, 0.2 to the power of x. Um, you can verify the solution using a graphing calculator, but it's going to look exactly like that. Now we want to state the x-intercept for each of the graphs of the form y is equal to b of x. Well, there is no x-intercept. 
However, they all have the same y-intercept. They all are crossing the graph at y is equal to 1. And just like before, our domain is x is an element of real numbers, and our range, y has to be greater than 0, however, is still an element of real numbers. And our uh, equation for our horizontal asymptote is going to be found at y is equal to 0. Now we're going to investigate what happens when we uh, change the value of a in our equation, y is equal to a times b to the power of x. So first of all, when I have y is equal to 3, uh, 3x, we already know what that one looks like, or 3 to the power of x, sorry. We already know what that one looks like. It's crossing at this point here, and it looks, it looked something like that. So y is equal to 3 to the power of x. Now, that was that one there. Uh, how about this, where I, where I multiply it by 2? Let's see how that changes my graph. And uh, let me get rid of those two. And so 2 times 3 to the power, uh, actually, let's put this one in brackets, uh, 2 times 3 to the power of x. And so my original graph is going to pop up first. And my next graph should be popping up right there. Bam, at 2. So it starts pretty close to the same place, but then it crosses at 2. So this was y is equal to 2 to the power of 3x. And actually, I should be in this the opposite way. I should put, be putting my 2 in brackets like, like we're doing over here. Now, if I have uh, this next one, y is equal to 5 to the power of 3x. Well, it's probably going to, so this is 2, 3, 4. It's probably going to cross right here, but let's double check. So 5 to the power, or 5 times 3 to the power of x. So up here, there we go. So this is y is equal to 5 times 3 to the power of x. And last, we have 0.5 to the power of x, and that's going to cross right here. You can plug that, plug this into your graphing calculator, but it's going to look something like this. And this is y is equal to 0 0.5, 3 to the power of x. Uh, now, complete the following table for these equations of the form y is equal to a times b to the power of x. Well, my value of a... Uh, in this case was 1. The value of b here is 3, and my y-intercept ended up being 1. It ended up being equal to this a value. Now for this next graph, um, see, there it is there. there. Actually, let me get everything in frame. Um, my value of a was 2, my value of b was 3, and the y-intercept was 2. So here we had a value of a, 5, 3, and 5, and 0 0.5, 3, and 0 0.5. So the effect on the graph of changing the value of A results in a vertical stretch. And that's about the y-axis, of course. About, or sorry, not the y-axis, about the x-axis, of course. And... Uh, my y-intercept is equal to a. So next we have, uh, if f of x is equal to 3 to the power of x, we want to write the following in terms of the function f. And so first of all, here y is equal to my function f of x. Um, if it's a vertical stretch, then that's 2 times f of x. Now it's 5 times f of x. And lastly, y is going to be 0 0.5 times f of x. Um, next, we, we want to identify the transformations. Oh, sorry, I should move this up so you can see everything that I just wrote. Uh, 